Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to manage your XA data easily by using deployment profiles and Visual Basic. Okay, let's start off by creating a new deployment profile which is intended for this one purpose. You can do that by selecting the integrator tab in XA and double clicking the deployment profiles icon. In the top menu you will find the option to create a new one. Just enter the name of your profile and click create. This preview will allow you to add business objects to your profile. You can do that by clicking the deploy icon on the right hand side. Click create to add a business object and just wait for the preview to show up. Apply the changes and click create once again to submit your profile. So now that we've done that, we just need to click File and say Save to Host. We commit these changes and wait for it to do that. And as soon as this is done, we just click on Maintain and say Generate Web Service Catalog. This may take a while, but I've prepared something. So this is basically what you will get as soon as it's done. Uh, it's a WSDL file which is created from your profile. Alright, in order to get all the functions that we have within our WSDL file, we need to make a web reference within our project. To do this, we right click on our project and say Add Service Reference Advanced Add Web Reference and then we just copy the URL of our WSDL file and paste it here. Then we click on that button and Visual Studio will try to retrieve the file. And as you can see it has found it and we just need to click add reference. And now we've got basically all the functions within our project and we can import the namespace by just doing that as we are used to. So I have switched to code view to show you how you can make a little sample program to test your WSDL file. First we will import the file by typing in the project name and web reference. Now we will need all the variables and I'll just explain to you what we will use them for. So the first thing we're going to need is the connection and this one's going to be a system operations variable. The template definition array will be used to contain all the template definitions that we will retrieve later on. And these are things such as a create template, a update template or a delete template. The context is basically our session and we will retrieve that as soon as we have logged in. And to get this context we will need a login response and since there's a login response there's also a logout response and we will add this as well. And another response that we will need is the main response and that's a main, main tenants response. This will be used to get the response of our request to see whether it worked or not. To trigger the actual request we're going to need the item SVC object and this is just just the trigger as I said and we will need another variable to identify which item we're going to change and that's going to be our item key. Lastly we still need a variable that uh, contains all the changes that we're going to make so I'm just going to call this item as new item. And also a reason code which will be filled later on. So now that we've done that, let's just create a new function.
and I'll put all of this into a try catch just in case. Let's start by uh, doing the login process and I'll use the system operations variable that we've declared before and say login UID PWD and whatever timeout you're comfortable with. Then let's check the login response and see if it was successful. If it was, well, do something. We're going to get to that in a second. If it wasn't, let's return false. So if it actually worked, let's set the reason to whatever your reason for editing is. So this is our reason. And now we will need to tell the program which item we want to change. And in my case, it's the test item. And I'll show you that here. This is the item that I want to change. You can see the name here is called test. And this is basically what we need to state here. The actual attribute that we're going to change will be the unit weight and we will set that to let's say 25 and we will also need to say that the key is item key. Our context is now being retrieved by using the login response and just send context and we need that to retrieve all the template definitions. As you can see, it requires our context. So our last step basically uh, is now to trigger the request itself. And we do that by saying main response is item SVC, change item, context, our item that will actually be changed, so item the reason for editing, which we have defined earlier, and lastly, our template definition. You have to check the array as it uh, retrieves many template definitions and you just have to look up which one's the right. And for me, it's the template number seven, so I'll just go with that. And if the main response was successful, let's return a true otherwise return a false okay so before we do that let's not forget to log out so say log out response is system operations log out and it just requires the context once again and then we're basically done so now let's test our code by typing it in here and setting a breakpoint here and here. And let's start it and see what it does. The program is actually working, so we're just going to continue for now. And we've reached our next breakpoint. So the login process was successful and all of our attributes have been set. So we just say continue once again and if it loads up the form, which it does, then we can see that it has done all our stuff. So now I'll check out the item again and just press F5 to refresh. As you can see here, the unit weight was 250 before. We've changed it to 25 and I'll just press F5 to see that it has actually changed to 25. And this is all it takes to manage your XA data in Visual Basic. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for your interest.